Hello everyone. In this video, Apostle Joshua Selman will be sharing with us on four scriptures that can shield you from satanic attacks and disasters. The Bible is a compendium of these spiritual realities, promises, principles, and prophecies. When you know how to make them work in your life, then your life will be full of signs and wonders. Stay tuned with us and be blessed by this video production. God bless you. In famine, he shall redeem thee from death. And in war from the power of the sword, no devil will take my life through the sword because I am standing upon an exceeding great and precious promise. It looks like it's too good to be true till you believe it. God is only committed to what you believe, not just what he said. Welcome to Start Now Channel. We are glad you tuned in today to experience another life-changing encounter in God's presence. The Bible says in Psalm 119 verse 130, The entrance of thy word giveth life. As you listen and watch, may you experience the transformative power of God's life. Job chapter 5 from verse 19 to 23. Exceeding great and precious promises. You must know what these promises are before you know how to engage them. He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yea, in, in seven, there shall no evil touch you. Do you believe that? In famine, he shall redeem thee from death. And in war from the power of the sword, no devil will take my life through the sword because I am standing upon an exceeding great and precious promise. It looks like it's too good to be true till you believe it. God is only committed to what you believe, not just what he said. In famine he shall redeem thee from death, and in war from the power of the sword. Reading to 23. Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue. Neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. 22. At destruction and famine thou shalt laugh. Neither shalt thou be afraid of the beast of the earth. Why? For thou shalt be in covenant with the stones of the field, and the beast of the field shall be at peace with you. So, listen, don't ask Daniel why the lions did not eat him up. He says there is a covenant that ensures your environment should not hurt you. Not the sun that smites you by day, nor the moon by night. There is a covenant with the elements of creation. They have been mandated to support what I represent. That if I enter any city at my arrival, the elements is an echo from the spirit to F the sun, the moon, men, the seas, that they stand in partnership with the things that I represent. If you do not believe this, the sun can smite you. That means if anybody uses the sun against me, you are wasting your time. The covenant came before your arrival. You shall be at peace with the leagues. The stones of the field. There was an instruction that was given to them. So you can enter a city and someone who is supposed to bless you is made to return back from his journey because you came. There is something speaking. Mm. Exceeding great and precious promises. Listen, these are the truths, ladies and gentlemen, that makes other people look like they, their lives are a plethora of coincidences. They are not mistakes. These realities are programmed through knowledge. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Is the Lord. Oh
So if it is happening to someone and not you, it's because you are not standing on that scripture. Exceeding great and precious promises. Mm. Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 1 and 2. We are considering exceeding great and precious promises that God placed a covenant and swore upon this. Finding no man greater than him, he swore that by these two immutable things, it is impossible for God to lie. But now saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you, I like this one, by thy name. I didn't call you as a crowd. I called you by name. Thou art mine. Reading to three. It says, when thou passest through the waters, I will be with you. I told you that there are times that the storm will not even come close to you. But there are times that in the midst of the storm, verify who is in your boat. If Jonah is in your boat, start praying quickly because you are about to die. But if Jesus is in your boat, find peace. They shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon you. Verse 3. The Bible says, For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom. Look up, please. Have you seen a kidnapper catch someone? You, you know the kind of amount they mention? God said, I took Egypt and gave it as a ransom for you. Even Ethiopia and Sheba. This is how much he places value on you. Do you believe this? Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. I'm showing you exceeding great and precious promises. This book of the law, he says, shall not depart from out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein for then shall thou make thy way prosperous and thou shall have good success a man can have good success if you are standing on this exceeding great and precious promises are we still together isaiah 49 and verse 16 god is speaking to someone here wherefore we have been given this exceeding great and precious promises read with me 49 16 behold i have graven thee upon the palm of my hands thy walls are continually before me can you see this this is an expression of how determined god is do you know what it means to be at the palm of his hands he says, all that you have given me, I have kept, John 17, and none is lost except the son of perdition. But I know whom I have believed, he says, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him, even against that day. Psalm 91. Let's start from verse 3. Then we'll go to 5 to 8. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler, from the noisome pestilence. Verse 5. It says, Then thou shalt thou shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flyeth by day. Reading to 8. Nor for the destruction that wasted in noonday. Uh-huh. A thousand shall fall by thy side, and ten thousand by thy right side, but it shall not come nigh thee. Verse 8, it says, only with your eyes shall thou behold, and see the reward of the wicked. Jump to verse 12, please. Verse 10 now. Jump to verse 10. It says, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. 11. For he shall give his angels. Hold on. I hope you know even Satan before Jesus testified that this scripture is true. At the temptation of Jesus, Satan quoted it. 
that God said he shall keep. He was aware that when his angels are kept, not even him can do anything. He shall put his angels charge over thee to keep you in all your ways. Verse 12. They shall bear thee up on their hands, lest thou dash your feet against a stone. Go to verse 15. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. 16. With long life. I like this one. With long life. With long life. Will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Believers, please hear me. Don't just jump and get excited for nothing. While it's good to rejoice, I want you to see the extent of God's commitment to you that he has covenanted with himself. These are the exceeding great and precious promises that by them ye might be the partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in this world through lust. Can we continue? Job 22 and verse 29. Job 22 and verse 29. God is damaging ignorance from someone's mind. You must be aware of that which has been written concerning you. When men are cast down, it says, Then shall thou say, There is lifting up, and he shall save the humble person. There is no going down for me in the name of Jesus Christ. There is no going down for me. The Bible says when men are cast down for you, it shall be that there is a lifting up. First John chapter 5, 14 and 15. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything, not according to our tears, not according to the vastness of our troubles, if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us, 15. And if it is true that he heareth us, then whatsoever we ask, we know that we have our petitions that we have desired of him. Listen. Listen. When you are full of light and knowledge, let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. There is a way that you conduct yourself and there is a way that you speak. Let me show you a scripture that blessed me so powerfully. Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 20. It says to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. There is a way that a believer speaks when the light and the power of God comes upon you. Are we together now? You will never hear me say some things about my life. Not me. No way. My destiny is too expensive for the risk of ill communication. No. Most of us have destroyed our destinies because we do not know these exceeding great and precious promises. And you see, it is from the abundance of that which is locked up from within your heart that the mouth speaks. Most of us, what comes out of our mouth is pungency and destruction over our own lives and others. No wonder our lives continue to recycle pain and defeat. It matters your communication that your speakings must be full of power and life. It says, do not say before an angel I made a mistake. You must learn to speak. My wife, this one that there is nothing now, what are the children going to eat? We are just miserable people. No, 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 no. I may not see wind. I may not see rain, but in the name of Jesus, I know that the valley shall be filled with water. See, our fathers who gave us this baton, this is how they lived. And most of us have not come to half their results, and yet we have the audacity to edit and argue with so many things. I was watching, it was Kenneth Copeland now in his 80s, and this man standing strong, speaking flying himself there are some things you can't pretend for long if you are lying it will show eventually 
Are we together? Yes. The Bible says to follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise. Exceeding great and precious promises. Now, the Bible says in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16, it says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Believers, please listen. In all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns and spiritual songs and singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. I learned this as a spiritual principle. Your dominion in this kingdom is predicated upon your sound knowledge of the promises of God. Most of us cannot quote three or four or even show even five scriptures that support your confidence to stand in this life. I'm not into this ministry thing. Me, I'm just an average person. The devil does not care. When he comes, he bulldozes anything that does not carry the word. Hallelujah. The average believer, you can listen to the average believer and know that this person is not a student of scripture. There is a way believers who are immersed in the word, it, it must implicate you. There is a way you speak. Do not say it does not matter. It is the path to excellence. Wherefore, we have been given these great and exceeding precious promises. Many of us right now, we come to church and we just hear and nod and say, Amen, thank you, praise God. Wow, nice sermon. And you go back. When challenges come before you, all that you, you, re, you respond back to the challenge with is sympathy, wise sayings, and cultural admonishments. Unfortunately, none of these three has the power to drive Satan. When the devil comes, he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Satan does not come for counseling. He does not come for discussion. He does not come for negotiation. When he arrives, he's to kill, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The moment Satan came to Jesus, Jesus would have said, Satan, sit down. I created you. Let's discuss this issue. Why are you like this? Was that what he did? It is written but I know what is written that's why I can use it against you it is written and Satan too said it is written I'm not in ignorance I know some things too you must be full of the word this year you must be listen you must be full of the word this year I'm not just talking of this church thing we do and then you go out and speak as if you are an idol worshiper you must be you must be sound in scripture you wake up in the morning this is the day the Lord has made I bless the Lord for this day I decree and declare I speak and I command my morning it shall be unto me as God said it would be let people tell you leave this thing let's talk we are nigerians we know what is happening you keep speaking like that the person who is leading you into derision has somebody who is covering him in prayer and you may be standing and it will first destroy you before you learn your lesson i choose to reorder my life to guide my life with precision i i remain a student of scripture exploring like an archaeologist the mysteries of the kingdom. I want to know the promises of God. There are times that you go online and just download scriptures. What are the promises of God concerning your life, your health, your longevity? Bring them together. You don't need to know everything at once. But have, a re have representations across every area of your life. And meditate upon it. It says meditate on these things. Give yourself wholly to them. That your profiting may appear unto all. Why are things not working in my life? Every door closed. The person who promised to help me has now changed his mind. Instead of calling the person and saying, I will never let you go. Apostle said, knock. That's not the way to knock. You knock that way, it will never open. They will seal it even again because of that attitude. It's a spiritual experience. You go back. What are the forces that control favor? Why is this person not attending to me? 
and you begin to program life right from your room right from your house as you step out you are stepping into an atmosphere that has been programmed already you arrive somewhere and someone calls you and says, i was just about to travel something said wait that something was you and god doing business in the secret place keeping your helpers waiting for you are we together the psalmist said i lay me down and i slept I waked for the Lord sustained me. When you are going to bed, you don't go to bed wondering if you will wake up. No. God bless you. See you tomorrow with confidence. See you tomorrow. Not I don't know what will happen. God bless you. Sleep well. See you tomorrow. What is the guarantee that I will enjoy my sleep? Oh, um, I don't look for anybody's trouble. No, that is, that is an ignorant believer's talk. The Bible says, I lay me down and I slept. I wait for the Lord sustain me. Then the Bible says it is vain to wake up early in the morning and to sleep late in the night. Is that true? Only to eat the bread of sorrow. But the Bible says he giveth his beloved sleep. You can use that scripture to attack sleeplessness. That spirit that keeps me awake in depression, the Lord rebuke you because it is written that he gives his beloved sleep. It is the keeper of Israel who does not sleep nor slumber. I am his Israel, so I will sleep. If I wake up, it should be that I am diligently pursuing destiny, not that it is lack of sleep anybody here going through that circle of tragedy in the name of jesus and standing upon the authority of the word we declare you are set free right now